As we've just seen, workers are entitled to just compensation. In addition, workers have certain additional rights, including the right to work, the right to rest, the right to safe working conditions, and the right to associate with other workers. These benefits enable the integral development of the human person, in other words, body, mind, and spirit, and they result in greater productivity and efficiency in the workforce. Good employers respect these rights, so let's look at each one. We humans are called to work, so anyone capable of working should not be denied the opportunity for gainful employment. Creating such opportunities for employment should be the primary objective of every economic system. Further, employers should include training that helps workers become better at what they do. And the church makes one more important distinction. The feminine genius is needed in all expressions of society. So the presence of women in the workplace is important and supports the common good. Rest, relaxation, and safe working conditions are also rights. As Pope Leo XIII stated, quote, it's neither just nor human to grind men down with excessive labor so as to stupefy their minds and wear out their bodies. Strength is developed and increased by use and exercise, but only on condition of due intermission and proper rest, end quote. When a friend of mine began a restaurant, he operated it seven days a week, but in a very short time, he went to a six-day schedule, closing on Sundays. I asked him why. He said he found out early on that to run a successful business, you need to hire and hold on to good employees. And none of his good employees wanted to work on Sundays. They preferred to go to church and spend relaxation time with family and friends. So, by going to a six-day schedule to please his employees, he improved customer service and reduced his training and retention costs. You see, workers have a right to enjoy sufficient rest and free time to allow them to tend to their family, cultural, social, and religious life. There's also a right to safe working conditions. So the job environment and all manufacturing processes should not be harmful to the worker's physical health or moral integrity. Finally, workers do have the right to form associations to defend their vital work-related interests. But relationships within the world of work should be cooperative, not adversarial. And so unions have a responsibility to educate their workers so that they have a proper understanding of their role in economic development and pursuit of the common good. There are at least two forces that I'd like to mention that need managing with respect to their impact on changes in the world of work. The first is financialization and the second is communications technology. Financialization describes the shift in the economy from production to finance. The financial sector has become an increasingly large segment of the worldwide economy, and it's brought about positive benefits to consumers. These benefits include easier access to credit, the spreading of risk through derivative instruments, and leveraging of capital for greater productivity. But despite these positive developments, financialization has contributed to two negative consequences, commoditization and short-termism. Commoditization reduces the significance of humans. Everything of importance seems to be reduced to a number, and increasingly, the maximization of shareholder wealth becomes the key indicator of business success, not how well it serves to further the common good. Along with this commoditization have come short-term emphasis under which leaders become fixated upon immediate results rather than on long-term viability. Then there's the revolution in communications technology, and this has had a significant impact on business, reducing the costs for people to connect globally. But on a negative side, in a world with an overabundance of information, the urgent can drive out the important. Every message becomes a priority when instant communication insists on our attention. Decisions, even important ones, are increasingly made without adequate consideration and with too little shared information. Pope Francis frequently states that technology should be valued based upon its effects on people. He complains that we often overvalue technological progress, no matter how it impacts the common good, and he complains, quote, 
the economy accepts every advance in technology with a view to profit, without concern for its potentially negative impact on human beings. End quote. Yes, profit is important, but businesses must look beyond profit to the impact on individuals and families when making business decisions. Economic and social imbalances in the world of work must be addressed by restoring a just hierarchy of values and placing human dignity before all else. We have an obligation to protect workers from potential adverse effects of changes in the economy. Changes in the world of work should not take place in a deterministic fashion. Workers' rights do not change and they should be respected.